Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Summit to Europe by G2A.com. I'm LD, and of course, I'm joined here by Merlini. Good morning. And good morning, buddy. Today, we've got a, an elimination match, Ben, to start things off. Somebody's going home. Cloud9, I guess on paper, the favorites, but playing the Power Rangers, who came pretty close to upsetting Secret yesterday. So. Yeah, Power Rangers looked pretty good yesterday. Cloud9, Yeesh. very iffy. But today's a new day, new game. A new, ga a new day, a new game. Here we go. Into the draft, it's Cloud9 with the first overall pick. They won the coin toss, and they elected for that. Power Rangers chose Radiant. So, seems to be like 80-90% of the games now. Team wins the coin toss, takes first pick, and the... In fact, probably even more than that, like 95 than the other team usually takes Radiant. That dire advantage seems to be down the drain. First pick OP. Mm-hmm. I think it's sitting at like a 55% win rate in this patch, 56 it's up like 2 or 3% from the last patch, which is pretty damn significant considering just how many games have been played. But with that said, uh, the draft. The Date Yacht Ross arc is out there, but they're not going to go for it early. The first pick for Cloud9 was a puck. Very different from them. We're not seeing any Terror Blade, no Drow Ranger Visage picks, although the Visage was banned first phase. More of kind of a... Uh, an open-ended start to the draft. They have plenty of options available. They can run this as a Fada Puck mid, a Bone 7 Puck off lane. They don't really make any commitments to their laning stage. Uh, they give you like a very general idea of what one of their players might be playing, but more open-ended from your usual Cloud9 drafts. It's just better than their usual drafts, too. They're like actually drafting against their opponents, too, with the AA second pick, which is likely to get banned out in the second phase when you have Necrophos on your team. And, yeah, Necrophos... Necrophos and Wisp, yeah making that cool resurgence. He's decent versus Puck. All right, I'd say, um, as long as you can survive the initial burst. Puck is also pretty good versus EO, though. Um, Cloud9 play around AA pretty well. Also, Suster play style, hiding around, doing Cloud9 things, shooting <laughs> Ice Blast from everywhere. It's And it's nice for getting sniped with Puck, too. I Maybe. feel like it could be a sitcom. Just like people hiding in like cabinets around the house and stuff, and like just an arm coming out to like open the refrigerator. <laughs> just Cloud Nine things, man. They ban out Nick Sesson in second phase, which is actually pretty weird. Um, not really sure what they plan on going. Medusa, with maybe. That. Well, it could be Medusa. Also, just be because there are. Or Batrider. Those are like the two main heroes that the Knicks really messes with. Well, it's also just good in tandem with Wisp, too. Just scouting out people to gank. But it's That's true. not it's not that great, I'd say. Usually people go for the Blink Initiators now. Or, I mean, if Power Rangers really wanted to do so, they could also get a Bounty Hunter. This Ancient Apparition pick could be very potent. I mean, just already very heavy emphasis on heals and regen here for the Necrophos Wisp. And normally most teams want to get a mech. So that's three heroes that you're three, three items slash heroes that you're largely countering with this AA pick. I don't know. Last time I saw Necrophos getting neck though. It's, I mean, it used well, to normally be not the Necrophos, but someone else on the team may go for one. I th I haven't even seen mech in like I don't know thirty percent of the games. Yeah, that's true. It's near not nearly as possible as it as or uh, it's not nearly as popular as it used to be, but still sees a decent amount of pickups. Power Rangers will go for a disruptor, so they get a a solution to the puck perhaps. And, um, I don't know, though. They don't, don't really have any proper stuns here. Disruptors. Kind of Disruptors are really strange. I thought that, I mean, they're very heavy magic damage based. Disruptor and EO very greedy supports, too. Um, and can't roam too much on their own. Unless you have fantastic Disruptor and EO players and, like, really good rotations. But that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty difficult to pull off third pick for cloud nine they go for the vengeful spirit so it looks to be the uh, if not an aggressive tri lane then definitely some potential for early movement here from cloud nine and 
That's not really where Wisp and Disruptor excel. These are heroes that want to sit back in their lanes, get their level 6, do a lot of stacking in the woods, just control the runes if there's no real aggression. And if they have to go, like, try on dual lane or even duel on duel, they may struggle to, to win these matchups. Venge is a brutal duel, duo lane, too. As long as uh, Cloud9 actually play to the heroes, two hero strengths. Yeah, I think that's a good point, people. though. Because, like, we saw them pick Slark, and then they didn't play it like a Slark. Or well, they just didn't execute we it We saw them well. play Necro, Necro Wisp, too. And they, and they tried to play it like a Terror Blade. Yeah, they just didn't really fight. But but on paper, this looks good. Like, if they execute it the way that, say, VP Polar did yesterday with the very aggressive movement from their supports, it could work out very well. Yeah, they definitely should. I, I mean, Power Rangers, Necrophos EO Disruptor seems very weak on paper, at least compared to Puck AA, or sorry, AA Venge plus one. Yeah, they'll go for a Centaur here. So it's been a staple offlaner for a lot of teams uh, in all regions, really. I guess especially in CIS. And they get that here. So they've got their offlaner now, likely for uh, Mr. Cheshire Cat. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how they want to lane this. Look, generally, when we've seen teams run the Necrophos Wisp, they run it in the safe lane. We don't really see that dual lane mid at all. And Cloud9 will bust out their Terra Blade, but they don't pick it first two this time. I think that's the big difference. So, um, they there's only one pick to try and like counter the Terra Blade now. Necrophos can be pretty good against him. Centaur we saw yesterday can be very good against him, but they haven't had a whole draft to construct around shutting the Terra Blade down. Yeah, I still think Terror Blade's a little risky. I mean, sure, Cloud9 loves it and all, but... I mean, I guess it's risky for both teams. Power Rangers don't have that much anti-push. They don't have good early game. Um, but the Blink, Hoof Stomp, Double Edge into Reaper will kill anybody. And on top of that, they have just plain old Blink, Hoof Stomp, uh, Double Edge into Relocate plus with anyone. Not really sure what Power Rangers mid, but should probably be a, another killer. Yeah, they feel their other heroes feel a bit passive, so you'd ideally like some sort of lockdown or initiation. Uh, someone that can set up kills around the map. And, well, Power Rangers do ban out that Bat Rider. Perhaps they feel like they were tipped off by the earlier Nyx ban, and uh, there is a lot of potential for this to be a Fada Puck mid, in which case they would need their Bone 7 hero. Uh, so, as far as Bone 7 goes, there's things like Nature's Prophet if they want to play more of the Rat game, though that's generally a bit dangerous against the Centaur and the Wisp. Hmm, what else has Bone 7 played lately? I think lately? it's going to be Bone 7 Puck, though. Okay, so you think they'll run something else mid for Fada? I think they've been struggling without Puck in the offlane, strangely enough, for Cloud9. And they, they're they trying to shy away from the Legion Commander, it seems, although it has worked pretty well for them. Um, I don't know, it just seems like they want to give him like a playmaker that's not Batrider for some reason. Even though Batriders, I think, is still pretty good. But that's just my speculation on it. I did see him run it once uh, when they played the Cloud9 EG series in Dream League. So they do still pick it on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Power Rangers, as for them, what are you thinking for that I think solo they need, mid roll? They need physical damage, I think, is the Radiant big deal. Because if they get BKBs on Terra Blade or whoever... Uh, Fada slash Bone 7, the last hero is. I don't know. They, Power Rangers can't really do anything versus that. And they can um, just go very, very aggressively. Or just farm up. Either or. See what they want to do. Power Rangers lacking. I mean, it could be Necrophos mid and then Disruptor uh, EO plus one. I think Tiny would still be pretty good. I don't see anything wrong with Tiny. It's not that farm intensive either for them, as long as Necrophos gets active early. Has a ton but of nuke damage as well, yeah. which is really nice against Terrorblade. I doubt they'll pick that. I think they'll just pick a standard mid, though, and not a partner with EO. Necrophos mid is a little bit Ember. too rare. Uh, decent Ember game. It's, it's up to the puck to shut this Ember down almost entirely. Decent at clearing out illusions. Let's see, what's his matchup going to be? Could be 1v1 against Puck, not the easiest lane for him. Or something else, if they run the puck off lane, or, yeah, or safe lane. There's still, like, Death Prophet if they want to go for uh, push. It's There's actually Razor out there, who's also been banned almost every game. Not really a Cloud9 hero, generally. Yeah, Razor's pretty good, too. A Pipe Carrier would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Pipe Carrier is not even in the vocabulary of 99% of teams, and there's your Legion Commander. 
So with this, probably the Fada Puck and the Bone Seven Legion mm -hmm. would be the guess. And well, let's see how much support they're going to give Shachlo, as he'll be playing your Ember Spirit. Whether they want to run like a Disruptor Necro and an Ember Wisp, if they want to try lane the Necro, leave the Ember to his own devices, or how they look to make their their early lanes work. Yeah, I, I mean, Cloud Nine aggroing with Terra Blade is highly unlikely. So, LC is pretty decent for them, but mm, I think it's a lot of farm in between TB Puck and uh, LC. Cause it is pretty level and farm intensive in general, this Cloud9 draft. And double blink dependent too, as opposed to like Necrophos and Ember who don't really need any items. To the, the one good thing though, Ben, is that they're running this Terror Blade, which. They love to rotate to the jungle early, so then they give the lane to AUI 2000. Mm -hmm. So that could be helpful. And uh, with that, let's get our mini maps. Oh, my eye key doesn't work. Really? I guess I have to restart Dota 2. Well, we'll do it if there's a pause. Otherwise, you guys are just going to have to grin and bear it for these gigantic, gargantuan, titanic mini map icons. All right, let's introduce the teams. It's a best of three, folks, and it's an elimination match. The loser is knocked out of the Summit Year playoffs. They will still have a shot through the redemption vote for Compendium owners, but obviously this is the, the much safer and guaranteed route towards the Summit Land Finals. So winner moves on. They'll pull, play in our, our Loser Bracket Finals, which probably won't be tomorrow because there's going to be server maintenance. We'll announce details about the schedule for the games after today, but they'll play the loser of Secret versus VP Polar, and of course, loser eliminates. So yeah, Cloud9 on the dire side. Got Eternal Envy, as usual, on the Terror Blade, AUI 2000. On one of his staple supports, the Ancient Apparition, Pi Lai Dai, looking to step it up after having a double negative fantasy points game yesterday. Not his best day, and he'll be playing the Vengeful Spirit. Fauna on the puck, going mid, and that leaves Bone 7 as your offlane Legion Commander. As for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, we've got J4 on the Disruptor. Soniko playing that EO, already taking down some trees. Looks like they may do a dual lane mid. Shecho, handle your Ember Spirit, headed towards the mid roll. Ditya Ra. Very different type of hero compared to his usual Slark or um, Luna type hero. So he'll be on the Necrophos, and that leaves Cheshire Cat as your Centaur War Runner. Looking at the offlane for Cloud9, don't think Bone 7 will have too much trouble. Disruptor is like okay at zoning. I guess they have a double range, so even if he doesn't get zoned out, he's still not going to uh, get that much farm safely. He also started boot, so he's probably not likely to die, but regen will be an issue for yeah, him. Yeah, regen will be. Well, he can just max press attack if he really, really wants to and not get moment of courage. That's not so bad for him. It's pretty mana intensive, though. You can't use it that much. Like, three, four times stops. It's definitely... It'll, it'll help keep in the lane, though, that's for sure. For now, he does take that level 1 overwhelming odds, gets a little bit of CS from it, and well, one CS on the board for Mr. Bone 7. Your dual lane mid, uh, generally the puck would do quite well against the Ember 1v1, but with a Wisp here, this should go fairly well for Shachlo, and well, Soniko broke down the trees, Ben, but he's not doing any stacking shenanigans just yet. Probably waiting for that bottle to come out. I don't even think this is bad, this, I think this might be worse for Ember, because... Wisp can't really do anything. You can't really harass the puck. You can't really go aggressive on the puck either because he's not going to use his orb offensively. And he's just soaking up a lot of Ember's experience, which he really needs. Well, uh, that's where like you should be just in the jungle stacking as much as possible. Yeah, and just checking runes. If he like denies fodder runes and stacks, I think it's much more effective uh, way of playing the well, Wisp in this lane. It's not going to happen because Cheshire Cat goes to the woods, so... Well, they can maybe stack the one camp, but at this point they're fairly redundant. As we'll see, Pylai dying, going for his double pull. AUI 2000, already hitting level 2. So these supports getting good level. Let's see, do they have a smoke? They do. And with this offlane centaur off the top lane, we may see a very early rotation from Cloud9. For now, they're going to check this top rune. They'll deny this one to Soniko, most likely. He still has two bottle charges, and they will secure the bottom rune, but you can see Pylai die strutting up. No rune for you, Mr. Wisp. I guess Wisp is genderless, right? So, not Mr., but... Yeah, who knows? Yeah, Bones haven't already just out of luck on bottom lane. Gotta go for a heal. Yeah, he's up to 400 gold, I guess. He'll get his bottle, hopefully towards the end of the next lane trip. Maybe has to make two more trips. Double range is just pretty brutal for him. Well, see Pilot Eye and Owie smoke up. 
And the thing is, with the centaur in the woods, they really don't have too much knowledge of where the supports are. They could probably no. tell that the lane's not being pulled, but... I don't know if Cheshire Cat's waiting to break the smoke, though. If he... In the position that he is, he'll see it with the Observer Ward. Unless they Once wrap they around left. left. Oh. Uh-oh. This could be bad. I lie, die, double damage ring, gonna wear off soon. And now the smoke breaks. They already popped Chilling Touch. Cheshire Cat on the retreat out. I think he got wind of it. They're gonna try to throw out a nice vortex, but it's off the mark. He'll tango through the trees. Pie with no boots. Can't really get in close. And how that double he... damage rune wears off. Cold feet is down. They're gonna have to back. They may end up giving up a first blood here if they're not careful. Sonika will charge in. Chili Touch still going for a bit longer though. Tether across the way. One more auto attack gets the first blood. It goes to Bone Seven. And now the chase on the AOI 2000. But he's been healed by Bone Seven to keep him alive a bit longer. They try to trade blow for blow. Surprisingly tanky H apparition thanks to that heal. And he just won't go down easily. Now Shadeshow joins the party. It's five heroes from PR trying to duke it out with Cloud9 here in their own jungle. And they're not even getting the better of this trade yet. AUI 2000 healed up again by Bone 7. Still kept alive. Pile Die also able to retreat out. Fada now heading to the south. Can they get a single kill for this? He orbs. Can he make it down to the low ground? He's going to try. He'll be denied by the neutrals if they don't get this last hit. They don't. What a disaster for PR. The entire time Eternal Envy's free farming. Both supports for Cloud9 make it out safely. And they get the deny on the puck, and they get first blood to boot. Oh my. How did he know? How did Centaur know to back off right then? He didn't have vision with Observer Ward. And. Unless, like, AA's chilling touch makes sound. They the were gone for quite a while. Like, they walked all the way from top to mid, then they smoked. Well, he backed off, like, right, right before, as they turned yeah. the corner, though. It's. I mean, it could be coincidence, but. I mean, it's not like they paused, so. Well, I mean, I'm just curious whether. I mean, there's some, like,. Uh, sound bugs too, where sometimes That's things true. show up in the fog. Well, making it go here on mid lane. AI 2000 will get punished for his aggression. Now the orb splashing through. Burning fought a low, but not able to kill him off. Final I die. Did die to a neutral creep. So he's suicided for that free fountain trip. He's got a teleport scroll now, as well as his boots. Both supports with our boots. Hmm. Are there any sound bugs with those heroes? I don't think I've heard I don't know. Any. But that was very curious. Yeah. He did literally, like, they, they broke. Their smoke broke here, but he was sitting in the camp, and then he just immediately ran to the right. I also think they should be focusing on uh, killing Necrophos. He's still really weak, especially without a Wisp in his lane. He's prime gank target. Especially with double boots now. They really could go for this. Plus, they've got a ward here, so they have an idea if he's got a support nearby. So it would be a good time to go bottom, but at the same time, Cloud9 are fairly level dependent on their supports, and it seems like they may make it a priority just to go back to top lane and get that venge some levels. Yeah, I mean, they can get easy kills, though. Easy kills, easy levels. Necrophos is so weak. Wisp is really squishy. Disruptor is pretty damn squishy. One base armor. Well, for now, Bone7, he hits level 5 nearly off of that, so that was really good for him. Uh-oh, mid lane. Jump on Fada. They got the chains off. He might have used his orb to farm. No, he has the orb cooldown. I guess he just got bursted. Yeah, things are going pretty bad for Cloud9, I'd say. Yeah, sure, they got first blood, but... Yeah, we had two one. of those deaths from Cloud9 yeah, are two neutral denies. kills. Puck getting solo killed in mid lane. I guess it's usually one, on EE. Oh, now they're going to get Haster. And this goes from bad to worse for Bone7. Caught out by the Centaur, stomped. Double Edge can come through momentarily. It's only a level 1 Double Edge, and Bone7 is quite durable. Thanks to that Stout Shield, but not durable enough. They get another kill. Yeah, I really don't think these two supports should be playing as passively as they are. Cloud9 uh, with Pilot Eye and Aoi. I mean, EE is strong enough to go to the jungle, so they could take over the lane if they wanted to, but I mean, they're just letting a Wisp and a Disruptor by far worse early games and a Necrophos without any support um, take control of the early game. Especially after they were successful. You know, they get the double boots and the first blood. And almost level 3 on both. You'd think that's like prime time to gank while these other heroes are weak, but. They're not weak any longer, Ben. So Nico hits level 5, has his boots and his bottle up, so he's doing decently. Ditya Ra treads, has a thousand gold. Probably going for that early Vit booster, I'm guessing. That seems to be the the default build for most Necrophoses. The other main option, I guess, is here. I mean, Cloud9 has rush. four people in the jungle, for crying out loud. To be fair, PR just had five. <laughs> but now they're splitting up. I mean, they're, PR at least were counter-gating. Cloud9 is just farming. This is... I mean, it's not your ideal farm jungle lineup, but see what happens there. Cheshire Cat just strutting around. They're only level 3 and 4 on these heroes. Not very durable. This could end poorly for them. They're going to walk in on Cheshire Cat, get eyes on the turn. Then Cheshire Cat gets stunned. He has no stampede. 
He may end up going down. Here's the Ice Vortex. Slows him down a bit. Now he's able to retreat. He also doesn't even have one point in reflection for some odd reason. If you're just going to be farming, I guess this is the more efficient build. I mean, still, if you you probably expect to be contested at some point. It doesn't slow And there's a much. coil onto Shade Show. Drops low. Looking for that Wisp region to help keep him alive. But Pi is going to rotate. And they get the kill again on the puck. Shade Show still surviving. He heads to the north. In comes your Disruptor. Maybe able to turn on Pi. Everybody survives. Did they drop a remnant? He's probably going to TP out immediately. Then looks to come back and get a kill. They glimpse him back. And he's at Fountain right now. He'll remnant back in. Look for another kill onto Pi. Shade Show going ham. It's seven to one. Two of those are denies. Now they relocate bottom immediately on AOI 2000. Huge aggression from the Power Rangers. Smacking down AOI 2000. They'll get a kill here as well. Legion Commander unable to retaliate. Doesn't have duel yet. Man, they just hit the kill switch. Get a kill mid. Instant relocate. Very efficient and decisive play from these guys. And Power Rangers showing that they're confident versus Cloud9. They now lead by a thousand gold. They were trailing up until that last sequence of events, but... It was still close, and as mentioned, they did have the weaker landing stage on paper, but now the gold lead goes their way, experience basically back to dead even, and yeah, they're, they're just getting momentum more than anything. Yeah, they really are, but it's mostly just a Cloud9 playing like super passively. No one's really helping out the puck in mid. He could have easily gotten a kill on Ember Spirit with even just straight one auto attack. From anybody, <laughs> it would have been a kill yeah, on the Ember. It literally was one auto. The Wisp was like two, so they might have even been able to nuke one and, and auto attack the other and get two kills. Yeah, they have to prepare better response to this. And I mean, I guess they're getting farm on Terrorblade, but still, I think they could be doing both. Terrorblade doesn't isn't the one that has to be joining this fight. These fights. And Terrorblade is not bad at zoning out of Centaur, especially when you metamorphosis, like when you use metamorphosis. Yeah. But Centaur will hit level 6, Necrolite level 8, going the pretty tanky build. No Atos rush for him, though. Now they're protecting the puck, but... I mean, the damage, the damage been, is done, yeah. Yeah, he's his blink is going to be supremely slow. And they do have a jungle stack here for Shade Shlow. They managed to stack this up earlier. It was before that first big clash. With the level 4 Flame Guard, this will drop quickly, and they're going to get a lot more farm and levels on both of these heroes. Orbs will explode. Shade Shlow is going to change to clear off 2. He may need to go back to well. Oh, we'll see. He's going to have to use a lot of bottle charges to heal up. At the same time, your Centaur picks up an Invis, and I think Cloud9 got vision on this from Pylai Diet. It's daytime, but nonetheless, Cheshire Cat on the hunt. Eternal Envy. He is fat. Yasha already complete, free farming the woods, but they have relocate. Oh, Cheshire Cat could easily set up a kill here. There's no mana for Sunder either. Cheshire Cat walks right by him. Did he not get eyes on him, or does he just not want to go? Not sure, but that seemed like a free kill. He's trying to find the supports. They don't. He doesn't know where they are. Yeah. Now he knows. As it turns out, they're they're not there. I mean, AUI has to f sit super scared. They have a war, uh, lane ward, and he's really close to his tower. But the wisp relocate super strong. Oh, Cheshire Cat might actually scout him out. Nope. That's a slightly more difficult dive on paper. They do have a teleport on Fada, Bone Seven as well. I mean, Bone Seven's just forced to sit mid. He's not farming. He's not dueling. He's really not doing anything. And that's two here. That's with counting the supports. That's two, three heroes that are getting nothing off the map right now. They're gonna go for their Roche though. This is pretty much what Cloud Nine always do on the dire side with the Terror Blade. They just go for the Roche. They've got a point in two points away from Terror, and they'll try to sneak it. There's no Fire Remnant in here to scout. I don't know if they can do it, but I I always say that when I see them with. Like two heroes in there. He did use his metamorphosis. He can move command the illusion to tank this one a bit. He'll let the hero do it at first. And it's not going to be the fastest one. Now they're sending a terrible illusion walking towards the pit. I mean, they Maybe got missed micro because they had an observer ward of that. Yeah, they got slammed because of the illusion. I don't know. <laughs> uh oh. There's your Sunder. They do bring this Roche down quickly, but. Oh, this could be bad. Power Rangers seem to know something's up, and Eternal Envy gets bashed! The orbs are gonna come through! This could be a total disaster! They get one kill! Sonico dropping low, Eternal Envy gets remnanted down! He's not able to do anything. He already used the Sunder and when he was trying to take the Roche fight. Now they start stampede forward onto Fada. Caught out in Kinetic Field and trapped by Shade Show. He'll get Necrophos ulted down. The chase forward. Looking for Bone Seven. Another remnant. Another chains. He purges off the, the stun, but it won't matter. A double kill. Roche, not low enough for them to kill, though. I, well, maybe with the Necrophos, they can whittle this down. They can they can do it right now. Oh, double damage run. Now they definitely can. Cloud9, if they lose this Roche and give up all those kills, 
It's with a buyback on the Wisp. It is slightly more expensive there, but four kills, a Roche stolen. Even with the two hero denies to neutrals from earlier, it's still effectively 10 to 2. Let's see if anyone will go down to the Saint Chaparition ult. Shade Show dropping low. He's got his Flame Guard out, though. So he's able to take most of the Saint Chaparition damage, survive. And the nukes come in. That'll pop the Aegis, but he got it before going down. Now they're caught out in the pit. They got to duke it out. They'll lose one to a duel. The chase goes on. Cloud9 looking to turn this disastrous early game around as J4 is forced to retreat out. Wave of Terror will connect on him. They don't have the easiest jump in. Fata still with no Blink Dagger thanks to that slow starter. Orb forward did not have the coil ready. And it looks like in the end they'll steal the Aegis. They will end up losing their Centaur, and the Aegis will also pop. So not the worst for Cloud9 there with the turnaround, but... Still, they're denied their Aegis, they had to buy back on their puck as well. Blink Dagger gonna be extremely slow for Fada this game. I mean, when you're two-man smoke Roche, and that was a, that was a pretty fast two-man smoke Roche is scouted out, you know your team's like way too predictable when PR is able to just walk in there and complete, take a, completely take advantage of that when there's a lull and, okay, well, Cloud9 is probably roaching since there's nothing happening on the map and we don't see any of the yeah. supports doing anything. And when, when casters are talking about it before the draft's even over, just because it's what Cloud9 does every game on Terrorblade, then you really know you're too predictable. <laughs> well, they're not having a great start here. The goal does tip a tiny bit Cloud9's favor after that fight, but it's more about the Aegis being denied to Eternal Enemy and the fact that they don't have a blink on their puck or their Legion commandments. They have no initiate. Like, heroes like Ember can just jump in and get aggressive regardless. Shadeshaw will get silenced on her tower. There was a coil ready from Fada, but... With Flame Guard, they just don't have the burst to bring them down. Too much magic reliance when the Terrorblade's not there. I mean, not only is the Roshan obviously going the way of PR, but also it's just a big mental block too for uh, Cloud9 and Terrorblade. They're like, man, are we really going to be able to do Roshan? Not even in this game, it's just for future games. Oh, J4, going to find out Eternal Envy. He's got a Static Storm, Relocate comes through. Eternal Envy, unable to get that first kill. Nice fogging. He doesn't get it. They do end up securing one, but it's only AUI 2000 who claims it, and he's going to pay for his insulus. So Shade Slow chases forward on a bone seven. This relocate going back. They will not take the Ember, though, and breaking that tether at the last possible second as they leave bone seven under tower. No protection. He'll go down again at the same time. They look for the turn. Stuns there in Cheshire Cat. Catches out. Pilot die, and then the heals come through from De Yara. They might not lose anyone. Necrophos ult to secure that kill while Fada. Jumping deeper in the tree line, looks to retreat out. Orbs are going to splash into him in a second, and he doesn't have a blink dagger, so they might be able to whittle him down during this time. The urn charges there. Dityara going to auto attack Fada almost to death. He will fall. Another four heroes dead, plus they lost the Ancient Apparition earlier. Make it a team wipe for Power Rangers. Five heroes hitting the deck. They're morphing, Ben. They're leveling up. It's now a 2700, 2800 gold swing. Make it a 3,800 plus gold swing as this tower will go down. They missed the last hit, but there's your blink dagger on your centaur. Almost a completed Ags of Dityara wants to build it. He's like 50 gold short of that. J4, well, he gets Tranquil Boots, nothing too exciting. And now well, Shadeshell halfway to a Battle Fury. Train wreck for Cloud9. I must say Sonico's Wisp is actually pretty impressive. He's... I mean, he's really quick with his relocates. He's very good about his positioning and... Uh, Spirit Ball usage too, and he got decent stacks even though he didn't get the one minute one, but aside from that he's played phenomenally. Yeah, I think he wanted to just help the Ember at level one was the main reason he didn't go for it. It was more of a calculated decision, not like a, oh whoops, I forgot the stack and I'm a whiff. Okay, halfway to Battle Fear and Shade Shell. I mean the question becomes like, the Cloud not even have this late game. Yeah, you've got Terror Blade, you've got good pickoff potential, but Ember, if he's ahead, can clear those illusions nicely. Necrophos, as mentioned, can shut down the Terror Blade before he's able to Sunder, and they've got the map control from a Wisp. Level 11 Wisp at 17. <laughs> Let me repeat that. Level 11 Wisp at 17 minutes, dude. Yeah, I don't he's almost even with his own his own Ember. I don't think they have the late game, because Terror Blade's the only fo uh, target they need to focus. Like, unless they get a really timely, like, swap and press the attack, and even if they get both of them off on, like, a stun terror blade, I still think he's gonna die. He doesn't have any HP at this point, even with Manta, Power Treads, he maybe has, like, what, 1200 at this point, sitting at 777 uh, right now, and then on top of that, the Ember Spirit is gonna be able to cleave him down, just because he's ridiculously farmed at this point, and they're going for a very uh, committed gank on bottom, it looks. And it's, it's, interest it's gonna be an interesting item choice from the Necrophos, and I'm curious to see what you think about this, so... They pick up the Vanguard. He 
could have completed an Ags, but against the Terror Blade, I guess, he just wants that damage block. So he's gone back for it. I mean, he also could have had the Crimson Guard much earlier. I still think Pipe's better, since they don't have any physical damage right now. Just a little bit from Terror Blade. No more talking about Pipe, because no one wants to build it. <laughs> Crimson Guard's It's okay. funny, though. It's like every cast, it's like, a Pipe would be really good this game. No one's building pipe. Crimson Guard is... So-so, mm, I'd say. Okay. Oh, what? I, it was a very fast. Like, he could have had the Crimson Guard earlier, or he could have had eggs and still the make. Like, even Chilling Touch, I think Pipe would be better for than Crimson Guard, but... Yeah. That's true. That's a lot of magic damage. Yeah, and, and a the, the Puck AA alone justifies a Pipe. Overwhelming odds when your Creep Wave is coming up. I guess they have some physical damage from Vent, but it's not significant at all. So I guess if you're Cloud9 right now, you just gotta farm your Blink Daggers. They don't have one on Fada, he's close. They almost have one on their Legion Commander, but not quite. Courier gonna... Uh-oh, where's this Courier headed? This might be a freebie for Bone 7. Walks right by him. I don't think he knew, or maybe he just didn't care. <laughs> he's <laughs> What's scared. Courier doing? He saw the Courier. Make courier up your mind. Him. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't even make a move. I don't think they saw at all, but Bone 7 can't take that risk. Damn Red Hook. Relocate would we just own him. They're looking for a jump in here. And it's tough to defend towers as Cloud9 because of that disruptor effect at this stage in the game. Like so they're forced to just give them up all over the place. They get two simultaneously. Power Rangers really extending that lead now. They've got Battle Fury Gold and then some on Shade Show. They're gonna go with the blink here on the Fada. He doesn't have the blink dagger yet, so he dies again because of it. I've never seen Fada shut down this hard on Puck. I think this is the worst. Puck game in terms of just where he is in the game in 19 minutes that he's ever had. It's definitely up there. And At least he has his blink. Finally. By the way, you, I mean, you've been praising the Wisp play, but I just want to put it into scoreboard perspective. 7-2-7. Seven, and seven. I mean, Shashla has been an absolute monster, too. He's, you know, he knows the limits that Wisp, uh, that Wisp gives him to. Like, he's able to just press into towers even with very low oh, HP. They're going to set up it. where this Wisp relocates coming, but there's two more heroes on the way. The Iraq caught out. He is fairly durable thanks to the Buckler. They need to auto-attack him now quickly. Miss the Static Storm set up, and they're going to follow it up with a Stomp. They don't even get a single kill of the Yara. Too damn tanky with that mass HP. AUI will fall. They wanted to ambush the Wisp return on the relocate, and they just end up biting off more than they can chew. Another three deaths. Cloud9 getting absolutely hammered by Power Rangers here in Game 1. Yeah, this is just brutal. Brutal. I worry for their their mentality, honestly. Like, this is three games in a row going back to yesterday. The VP Polar games, I think one of them was reasonably close. Another one of them was a total stomp. But they've this is going to be three in a row, it looks like. Yeah. Just... Stay away from the Terror Blade, I think. Or it seems at like least the CIS teams also, most of them tend to be a bit more aggressive yeah. and confident about that, and it seems I like agree. it's just not a good matchup for Cloud9. Like having to play against these teams that just want to take the fight to you at the 10 minute mark. Well, it's, there's just some things that don't go well for them. It's like if you see a Vengeance AA, you're expecting aggression, except t teams know that Cloud9 play greedy, so they aren't scared of their supports, and they just out greed them when they have worse early game and then on top of that they try to get back in the game with a Roshan and that's just scouted out far too often. <laughs> okay, Necrophos just entered god mode. That's a 21 minute Aghanim Scepter Crimson Guard. He stacks so much HP, like even though there's an Ancient Apparition, it's a level 1 Ice Blast. It's only gonna tickle. I think even if they throw, like they have to duel him and hit their whole new combo to kill him. And they're gonna find AUI 2000! Cheshire Cat could go in for the quick pickoff, but he's going to show some re show some restraint here. And that's an easy one to screw up, as he does not want to get caught out by a counter gank. Could have been a kill, but might have cost him his life. Very patient. It's a good and thing this is the state of the game for Cloud9. They're three-man rotating to maybe kill the Disruptor in the offlane. And even if they do, I mean, relocate will punish them. Well, here I'm they go. Thinking about it. They don't have a blink belt. Bones have one oh, blade mail. Doesn't. Okay. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't think blade mail is that great versus mass heal strats either. He's also got Ember who can do damage without taking any return when he's sleight of fisted. Yeah. And there's a lot of heal. There's the the Necrophos, the Wisp. Who, by the way, has not They've got double Ghost Scepter here, which means the Terror Blade quickly becomes ineffective. And a lot of it just comes down to the Puck, who's very far behind. 
the H apparition who isn't really that close to his level two or his egg. They're trying to neuter Eternal Envy here. Crimson Guard, double Ghost Scepter. Who are you gonna kill? Yeah, Crimson Guard is pretty nice for the armor, though. You need some sort of armor on Necropos. And the dam the damage block versus illusions. Like, he's gonna be I hitting mean, like a, a limp noodle. He, his illusions aren't gonna survive anyways. He's, he doesn't have Scotty yet. There's no way they they're gonna survive. They take way too much damage. 425 percent damage with 1100 HP. That's one regular nuke. If Cloud9 lose this game, they're one game away from elimination from the Summit 2 Europe playoffs. I think coming into it, most people would have said, hey, VP Polar lost Goblack. So you got to look at them and say, this team is struggling a bit. And, you know, who knows how they're going to do. Probably put them towards the bottom two. Power Rangers, kings of the upset, but haven't really proven that they can win a, a best of three or best of five against these top teams. But with a win here, they've got Cloud9 on match point the rest of the way. Only takes one bad draft or silly misplay, and it could cost Cloud9 their chances of coming here to Los Angeles. VP looks, I'd say, equally strong, even without Goblack FNGs. If not stronger, almost. Yeah, well, with Goblack, you sometimes get draft wins, which is nice to have, but with FNG, it seems like they have... Well, to be fair, they got Wisp both games, and they have, we have a pretty small sample size, but they have more tendency to get outplay wins than draft wins, which is, I guess, generally a better way to do it. So we'll have a. This was the issue yesterday for your Power Rangers. Some some lag issues. Some. They called it DDoS. I mean, it honestly could just be internet issues. Hard to say without being there. But whatever it is, the connection issues. Fortunately, didn't plague the early game. So as we we settle down for what could be a bit of a break. Scores twenty one to four. Two of those were actually denied by Cloud Nine to neutral. So really nineteen to four. But point is, they've been dominating the fights. They're up by twelve k gold. Up by 12k experience, I guess the question has been, they're ahead, how easily can they end this game? Because you look at Ember, he's not known for his ability to break bases. None of these heroes are outside maybe Necrolite. Yeah, but at the same time, all it takes is one pick with Necro on Terrorblade and it's over. That's because true. they'll get Reaper and then no buyback and no one else can really do that much damage. I mean, t even Terrorblade doesn't do that much damage at this point. And they can just push up hill with next Roshan if they want to. Uh... Probably won't end there, unless C9 mess up their defense. They still have like pretty good uh, hold, I'd say, with Puck and overwhelming odds for creep clear with the A ulti and to a coil uh, versus no BKBs and no pipe. So I still think they need a pipe to break high ground safely. They could, of course, do it with just an Aegis, but that's more risky than no Aegis and with a pipe. Yeah. They're in no hurry, either. I mean, these heroes go reasonably late. They've got good solutions for the Terrorblade, thanks to heal and damage block. Uh, Ember, who can clear out illusions. Necrophos, who scales. I mean, we saw yesterday, he's maybe not the best, like, time bomb hero. I think that was a good phrase to describe it that you used yesterday. But he's still a good late gamer, especially with that ult and the Aghanim Scepter. And well, it's across their Tricor, they should have a decent late game. It's not even about the late game. It's Cloud9 can't get any farm. Terrorblade might be able to get some, but the threat of relocate into like a blink centaur or blink centaur stomp into relocate is already pretty big and even just the ember just going on people is already pretty significant because they can't really seem to stop him with just the only guard. thing they really have is that puck silence but yeah i mean he has flame guard he has off. he has a uh, he has wisp to just he he just doesn't even care about his silence if he's silence he'll just keep pressing on and that's where maybe you kill the ember once but a, die, a buyback could just win them the game. Because you kill him once, you commit a lot to that, you probably have to use the full puck complement of nukes, avenge stun, maybe an HF or an ice blast or a duel, and then he, he buys back, he jumps in with a remnant, and they just slaughter you in the base and potentially get that Necrophos Ags kill and just win the game. So, But even if they group up like they did, they try to get a kill on Necrophos with duel, just dump Static Storm, Blink, Centaur Stomp. C9 don't have the mobility or the items to cope with that sort of counter initiate too they can't really heavy commit to one because they'll lose like three or four in the process of anyone's around on pr well of course for the cloud nine fans the good news is it's a best of three so they still have a shot here even should they drop this game but it's less about the the score of the series and more just that they they don't look like they're in good form and definitely not it's they're not just, where you want to be if you're in the loser bracket. they're like pounding their head against the wall by picking this these like four protect ones with Terrorblade farming and teams taking complete advantage of them. It's way too predictable 
and there are some downsides to the draft, uh, which people may not have realized before. And now that Terrorblade has been significantly nerfed, it's just much easier to not get punished when you let him free farm for 15 minutes. I mean, it's only 22 minutes into the game, and Cloud9 are just in that Hail Mary territory. Yeah, they still have the most farmed hero on paper, but when you look at the rest of the spread, it just it doesn't matter. And if you have one farm here, Necrophos is up there with Doom as like one of the ultimate shutdown one farm carry counters in the game. We'll see PR siege out this mid tier two. This is the second, to, or actually no, it's the last outer tower. PR with complete map control now. They're drawing lines towards the dire jungle, perhaps wanting to get some observer wards down. They need would a gem. be a good time to buy a gem. They need yeah. gem. They need observer wards. Um, they have one on the ancients. I don't think they need a one. They probably. Or I don't think they needed two. They probably just need a one. One in the opponent's jungle, and then EE has to play really scared. Let's see. They have one set of wards. Do they have any other heroes? Oh, top lane. I'm gonna go in on Eternal Idea Illusion. Yes, yeah, so they only have two wards, but can still shut down a decent amount of the jungle. And with these two wards still up for some time, they've got Roche, Roche control as well. Maybe this is where Clown9 just tries to sneak a Roche again. Sneaking Roche got them into this mess. Perhaps Sneaking Roche, the second time, will get them out. <laughs> They're hoping for a kill first, though. Four-man smoke. There will be a two-hero relocate and a stampede available, so three heroes can somewhat assist this. But let's see if that's going to matter. If they get a good jump with a duel, he's probably done for anyway. No stampeding out of that. The Ara will break the smoke, but he's in a decent position to deal with it. He'll walk towards Cloud9. Oh no. Dityara, that is not where you want to be, my friend. Duel was used. They get the kill. Relocate from Suniko. Also used. Too late. They committed a lot, though. Ice Blast, Coil. So, not sure if they can really go into the pit after this. There's a buyback on that Necrophos as well. They dropped three Observer Wards into the opponent's jungle. <laughs> what were those? Panic Wards, I guess? Like, dropping these two next to each other in particular. So pretty good for them. So they, they needed something, man. PR needs Honestly. sentries. They have four wards out right now. If they get rid of those and C9's out of smokes, there's not really any way they can uh, get successful ganks off still. Oh, that could get jump mid lane, relocate coin down, and F40 seconds. He did use his orb offensively, but it's not offensive if there's no one there to greet you. And he'll retreat out in the end. So they get the takedown on your Necrophos, and now it's Clown9's turn to buy a gem. So they want to reestablish map control, create some safe... Havens for Eternal Envy to farm, who is neck and neck with your Ember Spirit still, as Double Battle Fury begins construction. I assume Double Battle Fury. It could be a Lincoln's, I suppose, but it eh, wouldn't be, be too bad to block, like the duel or that initial bench stun. But generally, this would be a Double Battle Fury. Either way, he's getting farmed too. Yeah, I'm still very surprised PR has not picked up a gem. They have the gold for it. Their Disruptor is going eggs, though. J4 up to 1200, 1300 gold. He opted to spend that on some fresh wards, a TP scroll, and a point booster. So, their supports are tanking up. 1400 health on your Wisp, 1300 on the Disruptor. Not too many easy kills, which is very nice against that Ancient Apparition. But it does mean that they're not going to be as good at starving Cloud9 with that lack of gem. Centaur could even buy one if they want. He's up to 1,500. I mean, it's just... Why, why doesn't Wisp buy one? He's 1,000 gold. Wisp doesn't really need them Wisp any has items. a heart to build, dude. <laughs> he has drums for crying out loud. Like, drums <laughs> earn and ghost. He got those drums kind of late. Honestly, it's a pretty unusual pickup on Wisp, but I guess it's a decent snowball item. PR are going to congregate near the Rush Pit now. Your Power Rangers looking to take game one here versus Cloud9. They will get J4 coiled. He deploys a Static Storm though onto Fauna. And then is able to retreat out in the end. It looks like he may survive this. The coil broke, but didn't really accomplish much. And now they relocate forward, looking for that Necrophos ultimate. They can't even get it off. Heroes are just dying too fast. Pylai die. Also not caught up, but it's... Well, actually, no. He will go down in the end. Nice glimpse. No escape for him. Good glimpse. Aghanim's ult there. Kill secured. That means no venge for this Roche fight, which is one of their more important heroes to take the Roche. Gives them some reliable scouting. And let's see if PR go for it. Looks like they will. Straight into the pit. Double battle fury already complete on Shade Slow. Yeah, AO will come out any second though. It's a level one ult, unfortunately. And they're all full health. Well, not so much, close enough. <laughs> Pop the Crimson Guard. That's where you want to pipe. YOLO. Hey man, he's got items. He's got to use them. But that's okay. The ult doesn't kill them, then they all heal back up anyway. And 
That is where you worry for Cloud9. If they don't burst heroes during that A ult, like, they'll just all heal back full. Oh. E is still getting pretty good farm, though, taking just opponent's jungle and looks like trying to backdoor this tower. The illusions come marching in. Three. Working on that tower, but cleaned up by your Battle Fury Cleave. Shade Show makes short work of them. They do decent damage, but. To see an Eternal Envy Terrorblade game at 27 minutes with this level of farm and still a tier 1 left standing, you just don't see that very often for Cloud9. They're going to go for another, maybe not Hail Mary, but very deep and aggressive smoke straight from their base down to the Radiant Jungle. And they may find the same hero. I've seen this movie before, Ben. Ditya Ra was slightly more out of position last time, but he might get caught and, oh, what a time for a pause. This is going to be frustrating for Cloud9. The struggle continues. The previous pause didn't really matter in terms of what was going on, but... Okay, if they don't, if they don't get a gem here. after the smoking, then PR supports are... I had to take away my... Your, pr your praise. They, they know what they're doing. Flames. I mean, they're, they're doing the same thing. They have... They clearly have vision. Or else it wouldn't be so easy for them to get the smoke gank off. And Ditya Ra is... There's almost no way to save him. No one's close to the wisp to relocate. I'm getting reports that you sound like Bane today, Ben. My throat is not doing so well. Uh, what happened? Just getting sick? I, I'm Are we not working sure. too hard? I'm not sure what's going on. Did you go out karaoke last night? I did your, not. With your brother? Definitely not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just checking, you know. Want to make sure it's our fault. I don't know whose fault I've it is. I've got lozenges. You want some lozenges? I have lozenges. I'm good. Mine are better, though. Didya is so dead here. Mm, actually, maybe with if he's facing the right way, Blink Centaur Stomp. Oh, they're going to get the duel off on him. He walks right into it with the Blade Mouth, so I guess they didn't know. Then the Stomp comes through, connects on two, brings down your Ember, who did have Aegis. That's three down for Cloud9. What a great pickoff for them, and now another pause from the Centaur. And this time it's Seneca who disconnects, but hey, damage was done, so you can't really accuse them of tactical pauses when they walk right into that gank. Yeah. And same thing twice, PR, they, Cloud9 just did the exact same thing and it's going to give them a massive, uh, massive breathing room too. They should know that something's up, or at least better prepare. They can, like, bait out the Necrolite with four. They're trying to pressure EE a little bit too much with uh, hero presence as opposed to vision. Big pickoffs. They got two cores there and an Aegis on the Ember. That's very costly. Looks like they won't get the Ember a second time, though. And that was so quick, like, they didn't even get Eternal Envy or AOI 2000 in... Well, he got his ult off, but... Eternal Envy didn't even do anything there. He was still smoked. Couldn't even get in range. That exact smoke has worked twice now for C9, and it's a pretty low percentage smoke. Like, smoking from that far back in your base, you have maybe, like, 10 seconds before the smoke's gonna break in their jungle to find someone. But two for two. Cloud9 clawing their way back into this game. It was a 15,000 gold lead. A 15,000 experience lead. It's still a big one, but it does feel like one more bad fight like that. Maybe Roche is up the next time it happens, and Cloud9 could turn this. Also, Necrophos had a pipe he wouldn't drop so quickly in the duel, too. He just gets owned by the A, ulti, and chilling touch really quickly in the fights. If he can't or a BKB. That Blade Mail also did a lot of work, too. Yeah. I don't think it'll take enough damage where the shatter becomes an issue if he BKBs, but at the same time, you, you're not guaranteed to get that off, whereas you are guaranteed to get the bonus magic resistance just from the fight. Yeah, he hasn't gotten any of his Crimson Guards off for these ganks, too. I'm not exactly sure what he was doing over there, too. I mean, so Cloud9 is pretty much spawn, relocated to the opponent's jungle with all these wards up. Yeah, now they get some space to farm. Bone7's gonna farm top, Cloud9 gonna farm the Radiant Jungle. And they'll get a lot more off the map. They also just get the creep waves out, which has been a persistent issue for them. Okay, they finally got a gem. Second time's a charm. Though, that's the question. Mm, it's not too late. It's just it should have come out it's after the first late. one. It's late. Maybe not too late. They have more observer wards out right now. That'd also be nice if they could take away AUI 2000's gem, which is currently on Pile I Die. Actually, Pile I Die bought. I think he gave it to AUI and then he gave it back. Either way, it doesn't matter. Josh might die him. here. Mm. He's got reinforcements inbound. Cheshire Cat moving in. J4 here as well. And they've got the double relocate. This could be big. 
Or maybe not. Are they going to jump? That's the question. JHO sitting back. Here comes the relocate momentarily. If they don't run right now, but they get the blink silence off into J4. <coughs> then the duel. He couldn't cast the spell. Not enough to bring him down, though. He managed to pop his Ghost Scepter before this happened. So he stays alive. He gets healed up the Crimson Guard. Saving lives. That Ghost Scepter, the real work, though. And they'll get Fada's Puck, too. Buyback status. Do they have it? They've got one on the Puck, none on the Legion Commander. And PR will push in for the base. No Legion. Granted, he already used Duel. Don't know how much he brings to the table here, but he's at least a tank. Yeah, Ghost Scepter MVP, that fight. Well timed. That was... Uh, he did have, like, a second to react, but good just instincts under pressure for J4. Little Cleave tried to kill him off this wave, but the creeps... Not really taking damage. I think he might have cast it the wrong time. Either way, sliding through. Now he'll clear the wave, but in good news for Cloud9, PR just don't kill buildings quickly. There's no Razor with an Aghanim Scepter. There's no Death Prophet here. No Lone Druid or Tiny, so it'll be a slow siege. They'll at least do some chip damage, though. They get down a ward. And the other thing worth mentioning is I think they lost their gem in that fight. I don't see it anyway. Slide of Fist coming through. Oh, no, they have still have a fight like that. Okay, never mind. We get caught out here. Puck looking to engage. Fada now trying to give them the runaround. Oh, damn it. Multi monitors for the loss. They're still chasing Fada out. Slide of Fist is there. Chains will connect as well. And they bring Fada down. Well, a wild courier appears in the tree line. That's got the Chrysalis for the Ember. Could, gotta be careful about these illusions of the Terrorblade, though. Makes the long retreat back and lets the Puck out of the fight. Unable to buy back this time. It's a dieback for Fada. Kind of a desperation move to go for that. Dead for a minute. Should I show? Dropping that remnant. They have th two buybacks ready on Power Rangers and on Crucial Heroes. Plus you've got the Wisp who can bring heroes right back into the engagement. And they're gonna push through. Double Battle Fury, Crystalis Ember, just slow. May maybe a decent pushing hero with that Wisp backing him up. He's doing good work here. Chopping through the tower. Doesn't bring it down, but one more high ground siege. Should at least take the tier three. They'll go for the duel now, instantly blows them up. Great play by Bone Seven. Where's the backup? No buyback as of yet. They all get caught by the Ice Blast too. Heroes about to drop. Dit Ya low, he'll fall too, and Soniko might be next. Three seconds and counting. But no, he's able to get back to his death. So, four heroes dead in the end, Ben. Lone Survivor, your disruptor. They need Necrophos up in the front, not Ember. Ember doesn't have any survivability. He and has. I gotta say, they need a pipe, man. That was that was really bad. That ice blast ruined them. Yeah, they're getting wrecked now. That's a level two H operational. That's before the eggs as well. Either that, or they need to mass BKBs. But I, I think it's Necro in front. If he dies, it's not that big of a deal because they still have damage. But if they Reaper without Ember there, they don't really have that much damage to actually kill all the illusions to kill Terror Blade, um, and yeah. That's about it. A little bit better positioning for them. Maybe an Aegis and Cheese they needed to do so, but Bone Seven is doing work on the Legion Commander. Very nice initiates and coordination by Cloud9 to hold that. Only 10,000 gold lead, actually about 8,000 now. And that was with a dieback from a puck. That's just how big those other five kills were. Well, that's also without the puck in the fight, too. If puck yeah. were in the fight, it'd be even worse. They probably would have lost four, maybe five. They still do have good illusion clear, but I mean, we see a weakness of this PR draft. They just don't break base easily and quickly. It's I I mean it's still just poor positioning rather than the deficiencies of the lineup. I'd say. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, also, it's, it's tough to stay in position against this Legion puck, though. That's that's what they just a good pick off there. Well, the they could have waited for the disruptor ulti. They wanted to push while Fado was down, but at the same time they didn't have disruptor ulti, which is what has saved them from the duels the past couple of times. So they either need to position better when it's not up, or just fight with it up, or build a defensive item on Ember. Maybe yeah. he should go for a Legion Sphere. Hmm. Would help him against the duel. There aren't really that many ways to break it. Just the swap and the stun of Venge. And Sunder, I guess. But you don't want to blow your Sunder just to break a Lincoln Spear. They get a blink now on the Venge. More mobility here for Pylite Die. Cloud9 still hanging on in your game number one. They had their backs against the wall, and they've now chopped it down to a manageable lead. Still one good Reaper, it feels, could win this game. Well, they also lost a gem, too, which is also pretty bad. Cloud9 currently seeing one on Pylai die, I think one on the base. They're gonna make their move, they smoke, and another disconnect. Oi, oi, oi. Ember is probably gonna die again because they didn't deward with the gem. So third time probably is gonna work. Yeah, they 
The Wisp is not near him. The Wisp is back near the Necrophos. And they're painting out exactly where he is. I think they might even have vision of this. Yeah, they have a ward down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Mm, Dead Ember, not looking good for PR. And Roche not up yet in good news for them, but might be soon. Yeah, they're getting their items. BKB up on Legion Commander very soon. EE has his Butterfly complete and the DD rune, too. So, if Ember's dead, they don't clear the illusions. They get five images with DD on. It's really bad. Yeah. One fell swoop, they could actually take like a T2 and Rex and Aegis. Hmm. Let's see. Tower. They do have Glyph. They have a tier two up. Ember has buyback, but he yeah. doesn't really have a way to get back in the fight unless they wait 12 seconds for relocate. We'll see. The pause gives them some time to think about this. I don't see any spirits out for him right now. Although, it says he's used one recently. Oh, there, you know what? I think there might be one mid. Oh. I see like a dot on the mini-map. Yeah, that but might I don't be actually it. see the remnant there. Yeah, not sure. We'll find out soon enough, guys. If you're just joining us, this is only your loser bracket round one match. We still have the winner bracket finals coming up later today. That game will be Secret versus VP Polar, both of whom looked pretty dominant in their wins yesterday. VP Polar made mincemeat of Cloud9. Secret looked solid against PR, not amazing, but solid, and they did manage to take them down and move on to the winner bracket final. So it should be a good showdown. And of course, the winner of that has the much more comfortable position in moving into the grand finals, gets to sit back, watch their opponents, and, and play that decisive best of five. Winner comes to the summit, too. All expenses paid for the players, and good food, good times, tub interviews, not by Ben, though, by someone else, he shall, who shall not be named yet, our mystery guest. I think we're going to announce that soon, actually. Are you excited for the mystery guest? Sure. Do you even know who it is? I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it sounded like you didn't even know who it was. You kind of live in your own little world at the house. Mm-hmm. Ninja land. Ninja land's a nice land. <laughs> the reason we call Ben a ninja is that sometimes we'll be having dinner. He'll just, like, show up, eat, and then just suddenly he's gone. Doesn't say goodbye. Just pieces to his room. Gotta meet that stream quota. I think Cloud9 is actually going to win this game. If PR lose this way, it's almost worse than just getting stomped. Like, man, that was an easy win that we just let it slip away. A few maybe suspect item choices, but mostly just execution and positioning. Yeah, three three lost fights. One gank on Necro, another gank on Necro on bottom, and then the wipe on top, too. It's three really bad things that happened to them. First one's avoidable, or second one, first one's not really avoidable. Second one and third one should have been. So, let's see what happens. If they get Ember, Ember's buyback here, it's really big. Because then they can just kill Ember at Roshan and then win the game. And Cloud9 have by far a better Roshan lineup. Mm-hmm. They certainly do. What was the board of the bets on this game? I was curious about I that. Like I think it was like 70, 80. Yeah. 72 28. That's like just in the ballpark of where I could see a Cloud9 bet being solid, but then again, I mean, after this game, I would not have bet on them. After yesterday. Yeah, they didn't look too great. But I kind of figured it's like they, they would have evaluated the games, figured out what was going wrong, and made adjustments. Honestly, it feels like they're being handed a bailout by Power Rangers right now. Yeah, I would say so. Okay, washroom over. Got those hand warmers ready to go. Your Cloud9 boys back in action. Looking for a jump in on Shadeshlo. H. Apparition Ice Blast will come through. They get off the duel with the Blade Mail. See ya, Shadeshlo. Now the Wisp, who relocate a few inches forward, will die as well. Oh, this is costly. From bad to worse, Soniko. Go Sap during the relocate's gonna bring him back, but he's earning up, and. Uh, I don't really see him getting out of this one. Yep. Dunzo. 
Two down, Cloud9 in position. They've got the double damager bottled on Eternal Energy. J4 also got swapped. And looks like Cold Feet will proc. Uh oh. Now Bone 7 gonna find him too. Ghost Scepter is now used, but he can't TP out. That'll dispel it. So ends up just dying very slowly. Bone 7's not even right clicking him. Bone 7? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But the meantime, four heroes dead as they also lost their Necroforce okay, midline. They... Like, game over, dude. He popped the double damager in the Manta style, and away we go. Cloud9, let's see your buyback status for the Radiant. They have one on the Necroforce and one on the Ember. That's it. I don't think these buybacks are good enough. They need these supports. No static storm for the high ground defense. Eternal Envy getting angry here. He'll take down the mid lane of Rax, looking... Maybe to make... Oh, he can't make it a second lane easily. They'll go in for the chains. That won't connect on Eternal Envy. He gets swapped out. Necrophos ult, not enough. He could sunder this. Oh, no. Now it's really over. In a matter of seconds, Power Rangers collapse three times in a row. Fool me once, fool me twice, but don't you fool me three times. Man, that same smoke straight from the bottom lane at the Rex to the Radiant Jungle. Three times. Power Rangers got to look at the free play and say, Jesus. Get a gem. should not have lost this. Get the supports there to die instead of your important heroes farming the jungle. They need that point booster. Jeez. Value point booster. They need pipe. They'll try to hold the line here, but Eternal Envy has no mercy, and Cloud9 are gifted a turnaround here. They're thrown down to one hit. It will fall. Wow. Oh, man. What a way to lose the game. That's just brutal. I mean, yeah. That's just an experience in the mid game of PR. And, I mean, C9 had to do, like, Hail Mary plays. And when you're that far ahead, you have to see them coming and prevent that sort of situation from happening, which is five-man and... It was like a triple Hail Mary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you're they, three Hail Marys in a row. Well, C9 pull it off. Not impressively, but still pull it off. Uh, wins a win. They only got to take <laughs> one more. Then Power Rangers would be eliminated from the Summit 2. A loss here for Cloud9. We go to a deciding game. Three guys, you're watching the Summit Europe by G2A.com. I'm LD. He's Merlini. We'll be right back.